All right, so uh, this week we're going to start off with looking at some of the more detailed elements of the building, and then we're going to start actually cartooning our schematic design set. Um, so in order for us to uh, kind of finish off some of the larger, more sweeping moves in this building, I want us to start looking at the roof. So what you'll notice so far is we happen to have a rather simple kind of roof structure and you see that in our model so far. We have that simple roof structure already modeled in there. But we don't have the, the sort of structural um, element underneath. Uh, what I want to point out is that there are some elements that you structurally want to model in almost all cases. And then there are some elements that you don't really need to. Um, and we're going to do a little bit of both. So the elements that we're actually going to model are going to be the uh, beams that are kind of sticking out that go through the structure. The elements that we're not going to explicitly model um, are the joists that are kind of being um, trimmed up, I guess you would say, and, and sort of flashed and, and clad under the, the roof eave itself. So that's this element right here, right? So we are going to model it, but we're only going to model it representationally. The reason I say that is when you go to, um, let's go to the section real quick and take a look at it. Um, when you go to the section, or rather the elevation even, it's just shown as sort of a, uh, a joist, but in the section here, um, all you really see is the mass of the building itself. So ours is going to look a little different than this. We're actually going to show the roof um, elements, and then we're going to show the joist underneath as a separate mass. Um, and you can, in the, uh, what am I trying to say? In the... Um, uh, in the building section view, uh, we're basically going to kind of override it graphically so that it looks like what we want it to look like. And that's because we're not really modeling anything structural except for what really needs to show. So um, let's start off first by dropping in um, that element, that sort of joist element that's going to be underneath. Um, we're going to do that as a mass. Okay, so some of you have... have um, probably worked with masses before if you took the other class. Let me just fix this real quick. Um, I just, I need to fix this because it needs to match. Okay, so um, some of you might have worked with uh, masses in the past um, if you took this class before, but um, we're going to, I'm hoping this is going to look a little bit different for you. Um, all right, so anyway, the way masses work is uh, they're, they're sort of built off of uh, other profile, I guess you could say, um, profile extrusions, and then you either add or subtract certain geometry in order to make that happen. So um, let's go into our east elevation. That's this elevation here. And uh, I'd like you to go to architecture. And then we're going to go to component, and we're going to do a model in place mass. So when you use model in place mass, it may be just a mass element that doesn't have the typical um, para uh, parametrical properties that any other family would have. But you still need to assign it a category because it is still an element that lives in that model, and you need to be able to control the visibility of things with it. So um, go down to uh, structural framing. And then hit OK. And we're going to call this um, roof joists. It's going to look a little funny, but um, this will be all right. I'm sorry. Can you go back? Sure. All right, continuing on now. Um, so the, the thing that I want you guys to know is that we have two separate masts, uh, masses and um, we, it doesn't really matter if they clash with each other a little bit. Um, so looking at our uh, section, basically you have the sandwich that is the, the sort of um, trimmed piece of the, of the roof, and then you've got the actual joist piece itself that goes back. Um, we are going to model that by creating an extrusion. So make sure you click um, Extrusion. And then you can, for remember, uh, when you're creating and placing elements, there are these things called work planes. When you're creating a mass, you have to set a reference plane to create your first extrusion. So it doesn't really matter where it exists in 3D. We're just going to pick a plane, 
something that is in the picture plane, right? So I just picked any one of the surfaces that's facing me. And then you can just start drawing. You draw the profile that you want to extrude. So um, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to start at this corner. Actually, I'll start at this outside corner. Um, so I'm going to start at this corner and go perpendicularly back to the bottom there. And then I'm going to go some value, probably two feet, to get started. And then I'll just kind of use my uh, perpendicular alignment. Um, I want to point out, guys, see how this uh, shows a little double uh, or a dash blue line when I have it. And I, I haven't clicked yet, but I'm just mousing over over there. So when it has a dash blue line, that means that it's aligned to it's perpendicularly aligned to some other geometry. In this case, the roof. So feel free to click. OK, so um, in order to be expeditious about this, I'm actually going to just select that geometry and use mirror. And I'm just going to mirror that to the other side. OK, so that's sort of one part of it. Um, but I want you guys to be aware that this extrusion really does have to happen at both levels of the roof. So notice how that element extends all the way down to, um, to the end of the roof and that little you know, T part. So um, the way we do that, and I'm going to show you just something real quick in 3D, um, if I can find that view. Um, the way we do that is to actually model this extrusion for the whole roof, and then we have to trim out or cut out the void on the side. That's going to be over here. Okay. Do you guys need a moment to catch up? Yes, yeah. Okay. All right, so um, right now we have just the bottom profile, guys. And um, what we're doing is we're going to take this eave edge and we're going to push it all the way down to the end of the roof. So I'm moving. I'm going to move this down here. And notice how that automatically extended with it because it's attached and associated and all that. So all I have to do is just close up the, the profile. So that goes from here to there and there. And i got to clean up this little corner, too. Um, and then I'm going to hit, uh, well, actually, there's one other thing I want to do. So I don't want this to be um, in plane with the top. OK, so this is very important for you guys. I need you all to pay attention to this one. Um, the roof, this is not the roof. It's just the structure for the roof. So I need to actually take this line and move it down. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter exactly how much. I'm just going to say one inch. So I'm going to move that down one inch and move this down one inch perpendicular to um, the top surface of the roof, right? So it should look like that uh, because there's the roof sheathing that really goes on top of the structure here. So um, I'm just going to hit check on that. And then what you're going to notice is um, the, the volume is kind of this weird thing that's sticking out in space. Um, you can pull that profile all the way through your building like that. It's going to look a little funny for now. Um, but what we have to do is trim this thing down to exactly where we need it. OK, so uh, there are two things I'm going to do. I'm going to go on the south elevation and I'm going to pull this thing in so that it sits just about a foot inside of each side. OK, and then um, the last thing, and I want you all to pay attention to this again, um, these little flaps on the side, we need to cut those out. And that's done by, while we're still in the mass editor, we're going to use um, create, and we're going to go to void forms, and I'm going to do a void extrusion. This void extrusion is actually going to happen, um, you can do it in the roof plan view. And if you do it in the roof plan view, um, you can actually just draw your profile perpendicular to the ground, which is kind of nice. So um, I'll pull that across there, and then I'll do a mirror of that volume. And all you have to do is just make sure it extends. Um, you know, if you want to be exact, pull it six inches, one foot from the end of the eave. I'm just going to go with whatever I've got here. Um, but this side doesn't matter. It could be it could be all the way out there. It could be right at, at sort of close to the edge, but make sure it at least extends beyond the edge of this um, extrusion element. So hit check, and then um, you kind of have to pull this volume so that it goes through that whole element there. And then we're just going to do um, a subtraction. So you say, um, 
where is it, cut, we're going to select uh, this element, and then we're going to select the extrusions, and it cuts it off. Okay, so um, that creates that little secondary roof element. Um, there are some other things that I have to do here in order to get it to look the way I really want it to look, sort of um, most, most notably on this corner. But uh, at least down here, you're kind of getting that, um, if you look at it in elevation, let's go into elevation. Not that elevation. This elevation. No, not that. I have too many views open. Hang on. East elevation. Okay, so down here you're kind of getting that sort of trimmed edge that you're looking for. Okay, it's not perfect yet. We'll keep working on the detailing of it. But anyway, that's the gist of it. So uh, what questions do you have besides how did you do every single step that, I, that you just did? <laughs> yes? Why are rafters not built into the roof? You can, um, but since this is a schematic design set, you uh, don't really need that level of detail. So we're just doing some massing and stuff where we don't need it. What's that? So definitely available? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, if you wanted to model the rafters, I'll show you real quick. Um, you can go to, um, oh, let me get out of the family. Sorry, one other thing I forgot. You just need to hit that checkbox check box once you're done, and that'll close the family. But if you wanted to model the structure, um, I'm not going to show you everything about it, but you go to the structure tab, you go to beam system, and that's how it's going to create. You actually use this for joists too, um, but you just create a beam system in plan view, I'll just draw one on the side like this. Um, hit check, and it's going to look like that. And you can change the parameters of it and everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, schematic design, you don't need that level of detail. All right. If there are no other questions, I'll start helping you guys out with your issues and everything.